In this video, we're going to discuss the basic considerations for safely performing a deep extubation. We'll also mention some additional strategies to consider with increased competency and comfort in practice. When used appropriately, deep extubation can minimize sympathetic stimulation and exaggerated laryngeal reflexes such as coughing and bucking compared to awake extubation. This may be useful in thyroidectomies, tonsillectomies, or any other surgery where straining on extubation could be deleterious. Deep extubation may increase the risk of aspiration and airway obstruction. This technique should be avoided in patients who are difficult to mask, difficult to intubate, at increased risk of aspiration, pregnant, or morbidly obese. Prior to deep extubation, verify that medications including succinylcholine and propofol are readily available if reintubation is necessary. Airway equipment including an endotracheal tube, laryngeal mask airway, and laryngoscope should also be readily available. Before deep extubation, the FiO2 should be increased to 1 to pre-oxygenate the patient. An oral airway may be placed to minimize the risk of airway obstruction after extubation. The oral pharynx and hypopharynx should be inspected and suctioned meticulously to clear any secretions. A response from the patient to suctioning may suggest that the patient is too light for deep extubation. Additional hypnotic agents or adjuvants, including lidocaine and opioids, may be considered. If neuromuscular blockade was used, it should be appropriately reversed. Deep extubation may be performed in patients receiving either inhaled volatile anesthetics or total intravenous anesthetics as maintenance. Prior to deep extubation, the patient should be sufficiently anesthetized. For a volatile anesthetic, the exhaled max should be at least one. To ensure an adequate depth of anesthetic prior to deep extubation with Ativa, consider using a sed line or alternative process EEG monitor. It is important to ensure that the patient has established an appropriate spontaneous respiratory pattern and rate. It is helpful to monitor spontaneous breathing without support to assess tidal volume and respiratory rate. The anesthetic should be turned off just prior to deep extubation. Consider additional suctioning at this point. Deflate the endotracheal tube cuff and remove the endotracheal tube. Consider applying positive pressure as the endotracheal tube is being removed. A patent airway should be confirmed by methods such as auscultation, visualization of a capnogram trace, or condensation in the mask. In the event of airway obstruction, consider supporting the patient with a chin lift maneuver. Continue delivering supplemental oxygen and monitor the patient for the ability to maintain the airway without additional support. After deep extubation, remain in the operating room until the patient has emerged from anesthesia to avoid the second stage of anesthesia during transport. Some institutions transport the patient immediately to recovery after deep extubation. This can only be done safely with proper monitoring and education of all involved personnel and is beyond the scope of this video.